Hey guys, I'm here with Isaac. Um, I got an interesting question. We'll read that in a minute. But uh, I figured the question you'll hear, they asked me the question and I'm thinking about it as a hunting related question. I thought, ah, you know, I'm just not the best person to answer it. But Isaac, we've uh, met before in the past and I thought Isaac is. So Isaac, who, who is Isaac? So my name's Isaac. I was born and raised here in Utah. I grew up hunting mule deer and elk uh, with my dad. Uh, I like to consider ourselves uh, backpack hunters. Uh, we never had horses, we never had ATVs, and my dad would always, we'd always hike in to hunt, uh, you know, away from the roads, away from the crowds, always backpacking in and hunting, you know, basically hunting out of our packs. So that's what, you know, I've done. I worked for a, I used to work for a company called Badlands Backpacks. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're kind of one of the first people out there to do the whole hunting pack thing, you know, yeah. backpacks made for hunters to carry out your animal. And then now I currently work for Easton Archery. Okay. And so, yeah, that's one of the things, you know, uh, backcountry bow hunting is a big thing here in the West. So yes. that's something, something I've with. recently found <laughs> uh, and have become incredibly addicted to. So yes, for sure. Um, I, I can't, I seriously cannot get enough. I don't know what time we've just been talking all night long. Yeah, you got here at about what seven o'clock, and, yeah, it's, and it's it's almost eleven o'clock. Yeah, so we've been talking all time gear, gear constantly. What the cool thing is, is you know me, I love the hunting aspect and learn everything about the hunting of you know animals, spotting them, stalking them, glassing them. But see, I like your stuff because I'm learning the bushcraft, the bushcrafting is what they call it. Yeah, yeah. You know, how to put up a tarp, how to tie up tarps and things like that. So we've just been talking gear back and forth. So it's been pretty cool. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, so the question I got, this is, I don't want to give his name because I don't know if people want their names out there. I understand that. So he says, so I live in central Texas and looking to see about beginning to hunt elk and mule deer in Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico on public lands. As someone who has never ventured out onto public lands in the western states, what advice do you have for someone in my kind of position? My only hunting experiences have primarily been whitetail deer in Texas, not a lot of hiking involved. So that's where I was thinking, I've got all the backpacking, I could answer a lot of that kind of stuff, but the hunting, I, I, I don't feel that I could give very valuable information yet on that. So, Isaac, what do you think? Here we go. First thing to do when you're coming out hunting in the West, uh, I had a, so I'll, I've, I told you the story, I had a buddy come out from Kentucky come and hunt. Mm. And one of the things I told him, be prepared to hike, you know, and be prepared for the altitude. That's one thing, you know, people gotta remember. Uh, you know, depending where you're going, the air is gonna be thinner. Yes. So prepare yourself for that. So what this gentleman did is, you know, I told him load up a backpack, uh, you know, wherever you're at, you know, if you're in Texas, when you're over there, load a backpack up with at least 25 pounds of gear, whatever, something comfortable to you and make sure it's an internal frame pack, you know, get that backpack, go to the stadium, hike the bleachers because all the cardio running on the treadmills, all that was not going to prepare you for hiking these steep trains in the West. You know, you're going to want to get up there, get away from the crowds. So make sure to get in shape. You know, another thing that he did, and I'm not sure if this has been, you know, proven, you know, if it's scientific or not, yeah. but he wore a respirator when he did it to restrict his airflow. And so I, he said that helped him out quite a bit. So number one thing, get in shape, you know, climb, uh, get a backpack on, do squats. Squats are huge. You, you know, need those legs. Use the legs. You know, that's the first thing you want to make sure. Another thing when you're coming out here to the West, boots. Boots are very important. This guy came out with some, I believe they were scent locker boots mm -hmm. and they had the little clicking system on there. He hunted in those things for about four days, had blisters, huge blisters on there get a good hiking boot out there. There's a bunch of them out there, depending on the time of the year. You know, you don't need a big insulated boot, but have a good leather hiking boot. To what hunt boot do them. you wear? I wear uh, Crispies. I've, I've used the okay. Crispy boot. Uh, I've had, you know, I've worn those. I used to wear Lowe's before. Uh, you know, a leather, all leather boot. The mid, I like the mid boots on mm -hmm. there. No insulation on them. I do like the Gore-Tex. Okay. But those are the two boots, but the Crispies, I actually wore those this year. Boots have been amazing. 
been a great boot. I've heard Krispies are expensive, but <laughs> yes. I've heard a, a lot of good things about it. And you know, a thing too, uh, I tell people is, you know, also with the backpacks and boots, take care of them. You know, when you get something, take care of them. You know, as hunters, we'll take care of our guns. Yeah. We'll take care of you know, our bows. We'll wash that, our clothing, but our boots and our backpacks, what do we do? Take them off, throw them in a the garage. If you take care of your boots, you know, you know, I mean, I, I come from the Nike or Jordan era, so yeah. my shoes are always clean. Yeah. <laughs> so it was easy to take, take care of the boots. But boots, you know, for sure. And there's a lot of great brands out there to use, but find a good boot out there, you know, is a key thing too, because you're going to be walking around a lot, especially spot and stocking. I mean, you know, you know, um, on lines of also two hunting, you know, depending on what you want to do, learn the glass. I mean, spotting scope, tripod, binoculars. You can cover so much more ground Correct. without walking exactly. by glass. What you're going to do is when you're coming out to the west, learn the area, talk to different people, but also learn, get to a top of a peak and sit up there and glass and learn the glass areas. There's a lot of information out there like we talked about today. Yeah. I mean, information out there all over the place yes. on you know, how to use your glass, what to look for, you know, basins to look at. I would say one thing about glassing or, or looking at a peak on, on the map, Google Earth, on X Hunt, whatever it might be, just because it's a peak does not necessarily mean it's a good glassing peak because there might be trees in your way and you cannot see anything. That's something that I found this year. That's true. And another thing too is when you're learning to glass too, especially, you know, big terrain is, and I read this in a book, um, is move move your location because if you move 50 yards one way, it's going to open up a whole nother area to you. Yes. I mean, I had that example where I spent a year hunting this area, glassing, and then I just got bored and went for a hike and hiked 100 yards up and it opened my view completely around to where before I'd have to glass from this area. If I wanted to see this other ridge, I'd have to walk around and glass. If I were to walk straight up and sat on this, you know, a little higher, it was I just, was overlooking, it opens the whole area for you. So, you know, good binoculars and, a, you know, a good spotting scope. I mean, spotting scopes, you know, yeah, maybe, you know, if you want to get a better look at the animal, but definitely good binoculars are what you're going to want. You know, I prefer, uh, you know, a, a 10 by 42s. Ah, okay. 10 by 42 binoculars are great. If you go anything higher, like a 15, uh, you know, 15 or higher for binoculars, I suggest getting a tripod and a binocular mount. It's, it's, it's hard to keep. Correct. Stuff. And also, too, a key thing is tricking poles. So, key, key thing. The, my buddy who came out from Kentucky, I told him to bring a trekking pole. He brought the Primos shooting stick with the little lever. Ah, uh, okay. And I like, ugh, and that thing was heavy. Didn't work out right. I lit in my trekking pole. Huge difference. They're not for old people. So <laughs> I've been meaning to do this video actually about trekking poles. I won't go into detail here, but when I first saw trekking poles, they were for old people. I started using trekking poles, guys. They make a world of difference, especially if you've got back problems or anything like that, but just in general, oh man, they're a lifesaver. Knee problems, everything. Yeah. I mean, and not to mention too, you know, for myself, I'll find an area of the glass, I'll get the trekking pole, set it up, put my binoculars, rest it on top of there. I did that on my last hunt. I actually forgot my trekking poles, but they, the guy I was with lent me one when we were glassing. And I did buy the mount for the tripod, which I love with binos. But even just that trekking pole made a huge difference. So that's going to help you out. And then another thing too is bring a little pad to sit on when you're glassing. Hmm. So when you're hunting, you know, a lot of times when you're hunting out west, you spend a lot of time behind the glass. When you find an animal, you want to watch him, depending, you know, see where he goes, put him, you know, he goes, lays down for the evening, work your way around. And remember when you're hunting these animals too, when you're moving in on a stock, sometimes, you know, you're going to be there for eight to 10 hours trying to move in on this animal. If you got the patience, because a, you know, you could try to go in while they're bedded and shoot them, or you can wait till they come out to feed again in the evening or move around. Okay. So patience is a key thing too. So a lot of glassing and a whole lot of waiting. Okay. <laughs> 
So that's the thing. But then, you know, being a tree stand hunter, especially if you come from Texas, is when you get to an area, you know, with, if you're going to spend, a, you know, a, a good amount of time there, you know, let's say four or five days, one cool thing is you could kind of pattern the deer, mm. you know, especially mm -hmm. mule deer. You could pattern the mule deer and, you know, you could actually just set up a blind and, you know, see where their trails are and that and see where they're moving and set up a blind there above them, you know, around there. And, you know, if you're able to sit in a tree stand and hunt an animal, man, you you'll, be the blind. you'll be in the blind perfect. So those are the key things. I mean, you know, being in shape, good boots, and also a good, like we talked about, a good backpack, and learn the uh, learn how to bone out an animal, the gutless method on an animal, especially if you're gonna be in the backcountry. Yes. Definitely gotta learn how to do that, and check your laws. Certain states require a certain amount of meat to be taken. So another thing to do is check the laws, and also when you do that gutless method, when you take an animal, the you have to have the sex of the animal on the largest part of like for instance here in utah the sex of the animal has to be attached to the largest part of meat and that's where your tag is going to go as well so okay. make sure to check the laws on that as well so those are some tips for coming to hunt out west is shape trekking poles boots and a good backpack cool there you go all right so hopefully that helps uh even if you're a new hunter, that, that's a lot of good information for me too. So, Isaac, thank you. Hey, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you. See you later.